Hi, my name is Simon. Three years ago, I bought this boat for $1, and ever since, I've been tracking down her leaks. Now, this is a Formosa 51, or part of the Leaky Tiki variety of boat, and it is very leaky. Less tiki these days, but still very leaky. Here, I'm trying to track down one of the last galley leaks and tearing up the companionway cover, because that's the only thing that I haven't coated the inside of an epoxy. Let's get to it. So this is where the leak was happening. Um, I've dug into it and everything looks kind of dry. In fact, I even found a spider web in here, so it's really safe to say it wasn't flooded with water. It could still have been dripping. It's dry today, so it's hard to tell. Um, everything's now coated in epoxy, so hopefully it'll drip less. Up. All right, let's go after some more leaks. The deck over here is still leaking and I want to build an electrical cabinet underneath so I have to fix this. I've done the entire deck, all the scuppers, all the way around the boat. Everything is coated in fiberglass and epoxy and I'm still getting leaks. So we're pulling up the traveler rail here and we're going to try and seal up everything that's left in this teak cap rail and hope to God that that does the trick. This episode is brought to you by EcoWorthy and their 280 amp 12 volt battery. This is three and a half kilowatt hours of storage for 630 Canadian dollars. It's an incredible deal, but usually we've seen prices this low or close to this low, but not with the feature list that we have here. So this is 160 amps of continuous discharge, 200 amps of surge discharge. You've got a really small form factor with these new cells that are more environmentally friendly and denser and have a higher discharge cycle than some of the previous ones we've seen. It has the low temp sensor, a Bluetooth module, and a cool metal case that keeps the cells from swelling. Um, it's just better built and you don't see that kind of thing at 630 bucks. So if you're looking to get yourself a 12 volt battery, it can basically run everything. I use this, this runs me three weeks of power for a uh, perihelion. I can have the charger off for three whole weeks and just run all of my 12 volt systems off of this. Um, but yeah, I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you so much to EcoWorthy for sponsoring this episode. We will install it once the shelving is actually done. But since I only get a damn bulkhead in today, well, we're at where we're at. Every little victory counts. Thank you, EcoWorthy. Links in the description. There's a leak in your boat. I love vegetables. Potato leek soup. What about? What is the. Okay, where are we? That corner? Yeah. Formosa leek soup. Wouldn't be a boat if it weren't for a leak. Looks exciting. So we hit it with a belt sander and look for the wet spots. And then drill them out, fill them with epoxy, and hope to God that does the trick. Okay, I think this is kind of genius, but um, still trying to track down leaks on here. I want to finish these bulkheads. Uh, in order to do that, I need to find where the water's getting in. Now, I've already epoxy coated everything down here, and the water's still getting in a little bit. So we've got a cheap Vivor heater. It's like 110 Canadian dollars. The build quality is awful, and uh, but it's still working. So all it's got to do is work for a few days and kind of worth it. Um, I'm using both the heat and the exhaust to bake out this beam as I'm working and as I sand 
I sand away everything on the top layer and I'm left with little dots of moisture. And that kind of shows me like right here where the water has been getting in. So next step, drill that out, dry it out, hit it with some more epoxy and then hopefully it's dry in there. Well, that sort of worked. We're going to just attribute the rest to a lack of stain and varnish and get cracking on cleaning up this area, getting it ready for some bulkheads. We're going to do the patterning with door skin strips, staples, hot glue, and some cardboard, and then hopefully end up with something out of a good strong marine plywood that is actually to fit. All right, well, we got a bulkhead. <laughs> well, it ain't straight. It's got a bit of a curve to it. Tell you what. And there's way more air gap back there than there should be. I think there's just a little too much down here. Just cut a little bit away away. We'll just... What'd you call this, Ryan? Guy braider. Guy braider. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really wish I got more than just one bulkhead done, but I'll take every little victory I can. Eventually I'll have my batteries and my freezer and fridge in this hallway, and I'm really excited for that. This week's been really busy. Been helping Ryan buy a boat. We got an episode coming out on that. And of course, been working on a light festival for Christmas, and that'll be our Christmas special. You guys will see it next week. There's a little spoiler. Anyways, let's get in the water. Today's dive is off this new crazy dive boat that Brennan has. And so we're gonna dive right off of Dragon's Lodge on Gabriola Island and see if we can't pick up some more sea urchins. And of course, I'm always looking for scallops. Be cool to see a wolf eel. Haven't seen a wolf eel yet, so let's hope. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> All right, that uh, new dive spot we just discovered, which is Aaron's. To discover Aaron, since you discovered it, you want to name it? Um, I don't think it's close enough to Dragon to be called Dragon something. You know? Okay. No, Dragon would be over there. Um, Dragon D's walls? Dragon D's walls across your face? <laughs> huh, that's a good... It's not... Yeah, it's not... It's not. We'll, we'll think about it. Spectacular drop. You know, we hit the water and then you get to like 30 feet and there's a wall and the wall just plummets straight down, like 110, 130 foot. Really great spot, great geography. It's fun to climb down. Tons and tons of lingcod and one giant Pacific octopus. And scallops. And scallops. Perfect. Alright. Take it there. Going for a rip.